Rarely are there very good things. This, the, the, if the, you know, Trump getting elected, not because I was even a Trump fan, but to watch the entire left spurg out. That, that is the best. They end up watch Hillary lose. It's sadly, it's it's a it has nothing to do with Trump. It's just a, but good things like that rarely happen. And uh, John Wick Two is one of those things. Holy shit, was that a good movie? Uh, and I did want to. I'm gonna even go, I'm gonna post this up on on YouTube. Um, in advance, because I want as many people to see it as possible. Guys, this is a great movie. Now, if you've seen the first John Wick, you know it stars the magical uh, uh, Chrysler Charger that can drive off platforms and roofs and and, and drop 50 feet uh, and keep riding and driving. So that was impossible. And then at the end, John Wick, played by Keanu Reeves, you, you'll, you'll have to get over that. Um, he he's kicking the shit out of all these badass dudes. Roundhouse kicking chick cop show style, except this John Wick. You know, like he's supposed to be that badass, and he's laying waste, physically fighting six foot eight Russian mafioso type guys. And my biggest problem, aside for for the indestructible charger, uh, is in the final scene, and I'm not ruining anything. The final scene, he, he gets to the, the main boss, and the main boss is this 65, almost 70-year-old Russian mafia, Don. And he's wiped out all of his henchmen. The guy ain't got no protection. And for some reason, John Wick becomes the biggest pussy and can't kick this guy's ass. He should just be able to like, like crack him right in the throat and then let him die. He should be able to just break his neck. But But no, in the movie... This the the like most epic fight occurs. This old fart man is actually kicking the shit out of John Wick. And so when John Wick Two came out, I'm just like, oh, what is it going to have another magical and magically indestructible Dodge Charger? Is it going to fly off rooftops? Is this going to be a little bit of Fast and Furious, where uh, cars are flying out of buildings and magically drive downstairs? Is this going to be uh, 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 a geriatric kicking a Gen Xer's ass? You know, after he just laid waste to an entire Spetsnaz team or, or Navy SEALs with a toothpick. So thankfully, no, that didn't happen. Right? So I was, I was a little reluctant to go see it. I was like, okay, do I want to go see it? And, and, and it was one of those things where I was so bored. My buddy says, hey, you want to go see John Wick? I'm like, yeah, what the hell? And very glad I did because they got rid of it. Now, not to give you any spoilers, not going to ruin anything here. You can figure it out. It's just gun porn. That's all it is. It's a great movie. There is an element of an indestructible Mustang. He gets a classical Mustang in the intro scene. And it was painful. There's two things that was painful. One, to watch the girl cut her wrist the long way. I can't I can't stand surgery or blood like that. I can understand people getting shot. I can see explosions. But I cannot see a surgical cutting like that. It was just... That, that was disturbing. Uh, but what's even worse is... Very first scene... He goes back, John Wick, he goes back to get his classical Mustang muscle car. I don't know if it was a Mach 1 or... It was like a, a bullet Steve McQueen type of Mustang car. I'm like, well, that's very nice. That's very nice. And then it proceeds to just go into a crash bang derby. They destroy this car. Now, I don't know if they actually took a real Mustang. I hope to God they didn't. Because it was just this beautiful work of American art and and history it's just it's just perfect is this beautiful mustang so i hope they did some digital rendering to make it look like the mustang was getting the crap kicked out of it but in the end this mustang is it, it's hit like five or six direct hits and the engine still starts up and he still manages to drive it home the other thing is john wick gets hit about three or four times by a car on his side but he still gets up he's still kicking and fine like the guy just can't break any bones he's like uh Wolverine with the adamantium uh, skeleton inside of him. And so apparently John Wick's bones don't break. But you 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 look past those two things. Oh! <laughs> One of the few movies that improves upon the original. Let me tell you why. It's great action. But what I really love is there's a Hitman, the video game if you're not aware. There's a Hitman type of organization. It's a... Uh, he belongs to this, uh, I wouldn't say criminal, but certainly underground organization, and they put contracts and hit out on people. It's just basically an organization, a, 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 an entity of assassins. 
And these assassins sometimes go ahead and they, and they have to fight each other. But there are rules. All right? you, if you're on company ground, you cannot fight each other. All right, So it's like a safe haven. And there's one guy, kind of like a Don, he's in charge of all of it. And he's very fair. And he has all the power. And he's like, you know, uh, you, you, you guys are on ground. You cannot fight here. So what ends up happening is there's this professionalism between the people that try to kill each other where and, and, and only I, I won't ruin anything either with this movie only they don't abuse it it's not like they all run to the safe house to avoid getting killed the bad guy in this one does but through different paths through lives two guys trying to kill each other two assassins end up sitting at the same bar having a drink and they're just and they know the rules they can't kill each other even though they're impassioned this isn't even necessarily professional sometimes it's personal but you have the rules with the organization and that just throws a great i wouldn't say spin but angle just a great uh not subplot what am i looking for it it, it just adds a lot to the movie regardless that subplot or flavor or spice when combined with some amazing action which you kind of have to, you know, not not really believe that Keanu Reeves can do it. Uh, it it overcomes any shortcomings this movie might have, and then oh, and then they they have a roundhouse kicking chick cop show. They have this girl. She, oh, she's an assassin and she's deaf. She does sign language, and it's this waif. It's this kid, you know, you're just like, okay. And then all the, all the women have tattoos. There's an element of millennial dipshittery going on there. So, um, and John Wick, he's, he's running into some tough dudes. You know, he's fighting, he's going. And it, he almost has a, like, John McClane and Die Hard. Like, n- it never lets up. He's constantly fighting in this movie. It never has time to recoup or relax. So he gets to this waif of a girl. And instead of a lengthy two, three minute fight, it's like, 15 seconds and the way he kills her is by simply overpowering her oh she knows all of her ninja moves oh look out here comes the roundhouse kicking chick cop girl here oh wow she's got a knife and he just basically grabs her throws her up against the wall there's a little bit of fight counter fight a little bit of judo where you're using the strength of one person but in the end he just basically gets her knife he punches her. She tries to block with the hand. The hand goes through her. The knife goes through her hand, and he just takes it and rams it right into her chest. That's it. Sorry, ladies. Yeah, yeah. You go become Holly Holm. All right. You go ahead and do that. But in the end, John Wick is gonna kick your ass. You're no freaking Russian mafioso type of guy. But uh, anyway, I don't want to ruin the the plot. Uh, I I certainly have whetted your appetite with it. It really is that organization, um, how they they weave that into this horrendously violent and and um, like revenge and passionate. And they put a hit out for John. Wayne. I mean, they weave it so perfectly into this story that you know there's going to be another movie coming, and you're hoping that God that it's that it's like, you know, going to be as good as the second. If they keep the trend up where like the first one was meh, the second one was really good. I can't I I don't know if they're going to be able to top the second. But if hey, if the third one comes out the way they set it up, whoo, yeah, I will definitely go see John Wick. John Wick, let me put it this way. John Wick is going to be the second one, John Wick 2 is going to be the second movie that I will probably see in the mo- movie theaters twice or more than once. Because the girlfriend, I, I was telling her about it last night because she flew back to the cities and left me here in poor, warm Las Vegas. Um, she, she's like, oh, well, would you want to go see it again? I'm like, hell yes. Hell yes, I'll go see it again. I think I saw Guardians of the Galaxy three times in the movie theaters. This one is a definite two. two. I mean, and that's, that's as highly ranked as you can get. I mean, most movies are crap. I don't even bother going to see them. This was a pleasant surprise, but not always a pleasant surprise. This is one that you have to go see in the movie theater again, so, so it is that good. 